Tyler, I'm Hasse Fröberg from Musical Companion and of course the Flower Kings as well. And you're watching Morrow.com. Musical influences, it's like rock and, and prog from the 70s. No surprises really, it's Jess and Genesis and uh, I mean the Purple Queen, uh, Thin Lizzy, that kind of stuff. Uh, I also like some of the stuff that came out, uh, like music from the 60s, but I was way too young to really uh, get into it. But uh, I mean the, the big bands from the 70s, that's where, where I kind of started, yeah. As uh, I guess many of you guys know, um, uh, I've been playing in the Flower Kings for many, many years and uh, before that I actually released a couple of records with a, more or less a heavy metal band back in Sweden in the 80s called Spellbound. Uh, and after that I did another record with a more kind of bar rock band and we played a whole lot throughout Sweden. We even went to England once and uh, did a tour. and. So uh, I guess that's more or less my musical background. I've been playing in lots of different cover bands as well. And uh, But, but uh, the main thing for the last 20 years or so has been the Flower Kings. And uh, back in early 2008 or late 2007, we took a hi hiatus with the Flower Kings. And that's when I formed Musical Companion. Because I felt I had, uh, I had all of a sudden started to write music again. And I thought, uh, because back then I wasn't even sure if the Flower Kings would ever play again. So, I, and uh, so that's the reason I started this band. And we've now done. We released our first album, Future Pass, in 2010. We did something like 10 shows in that one, maybe 12. And then we did uh, Power Play in 2012. That ended up. Uh, what do you say? It was a kind of a tough thing for me because. Uh, the result of it all was that the flag, the Flowkings released Banks of Eden, I guess something like six weeks after the release of Powerplay, which kind of, that, that album was kind of dead, you know, I had, I had to take care of all the, I think we did something like 60 shows on Banks of Eden with the Flower Kings. Um, and anyway, but here we are now and we just, or we released uh, our third album, HFMC. Which it, of course is uh, Hasse Fröberg musical companion earlier this year, and here we are touring Europe, and it's been a uh, yeah, it's been great so far. Well, why? <laughs> I don't think I have a good answer to that. I was thinking of it, it sounds a little bit more cryptic, a little bit more. Uh, I don't know. The, the whole name is weird. I mean, for instance, Hasse Froberg or Hasse Fröberg, some, which is the way you pronounce it in Sweden, in Swedish, together with musical companion. It's totally awkward and everything, but I, I think that it's, it's so crazy that it actually might work. And I had a plan when I, when I formed the band that, uh, because I, I think the, the, the reason I used my, my own name was actually to put pressure on myself to actually do it because if if I would have like a if I would name the band Kiss or whatever <laughs> maybe not Kiss but uh, I, you can always play in someone else but if I have my own name on uh, on the band you know as a February musical companion you you really I'm the one to blame for whatever goes wrong or for whatever for even if we, if we do good things I'm the one to yeah. So it was more or less to put pressure on me to actually do it, because I was kind of uncertain if I want to, do I want to be a band leader again? It's been very comfortable playing with the Flowkings for <laughs> 20 years, having Royne taking care of stuff and sitting a little bit in the back seat, but uh, that's not the way this time. It's, uh, yeah, being a band leader, it's a, it's a lot of, uh, what do you say? It's not all about the music. A lot of other stuff, especially before a tour and everything, you need to. There's lot, lots of work that needs to be done. Hey, I cannot get there for sure. 
Yeah, I think uh, the first two albums was uh, very, uh, what do you say, very much me. I o almost told Thompson what to play. I had all the ideas what all I should play and everything. This is more like a band contribution to the whole uh, uh, to the whole album. Especially me and, and the drummer Ola, we worked very very tight in the on the pre-production to get. To sort out the tempos and try to get everything as good as uh, possible, and, and uh, but it's more of a band thing, so that that's why the I, I had different on we could easily I call the album "Can't Stop the Clock" or whatever, but I, I really want to make a point that that uh, this is actually a band. It's not a project. It's it's a band, and and I also wanted to have that that. Uh, which I, by the way, think is a great-looking logo, the HFMC logo, and you can you can have that um, because of the the that the album is called HFMC, and uh, yeah, I guess that's why. It's actually it, it has some some connections to Flowerkings. It's a. Uh, uh, American guy that I learned to know uh, through Flower Kings. He's been uh, taking care of us, uh, I'd say, almost every time we've come to play in, in the United States. He's been uh, helping out with stuff, and uh, and uh, it's actually his son. Uh, I have never met the guy, but uh, I talked to Ray, Ray Laboda. Is the guy that I know, and I talked to him and said, "Well, you should you should check out my son. It's quite good." And and. Uh, and I, I, I uh, what do you say, we had some email contact and, and I told him the idea that I had. Uh, I, want, I want the album, it's very, the album is very much about time and a lot of me looking back at my, uh, uh, yeah, me growing up or whatever. And uh, I would like to see, on, on the cover, I would like, I would like to see a clock. I would like to see a young boy. I would like to see an old man. That that was what I told him, and uh, he came up with. Uh, first of all, he came with a logo, and I said, "Yeah, that's that's fantastic." And uh, then I said, have, "You know what I want? You have a go." And he sent me some different uh, options to choose to choose between, and that was the one I liked the most. And uh, yeah, uh, some think it's super. I've also read that some think uh, <laughs> the cover looks a bit cheap, but. Uh, at least it, it's an uh, original drawing, and uh, I think it did a great job, actually. I like it. I think it must be a coincidence, but uh, for me, uh, the thing is that I didn't even realize until I was actually trying to get the lyrics ready for the booklet that, Jesus, this is really me... Uh, what do you say? Like a more or less a maybe not a biography of my life, but but it's very much me and, and a journey through time. So so in, I can only speak for my in my case about my case, but I, it's about Riverside's box and their clocks on the covers. I'm not sure what what that's about, but for me, it's uh, the time has very much to do with uh, what this album is about. So uh, when it comes to the lyrics. It's like a short, brief uh, journey through my life as a musician. And the fact is, the, the lyrics are so straightforward. I, I was kind of nervous. Will, will people buy this? Is it uh, is it too much? Or, I mean, it, only just twenty. Blah blah blah. And I really, uh, the first verse is the first verse is actually about my first real band, Spellbound, those years. And the second verse is a little bit of. Uh, uh, but it's really about me playing music, and uh, uh, I think it's the lyrics are kind of special in that way. I don't, haven't, haven't really heard any other songs that are so direct, focused on such a topic, so to speak. But it's uh, yeah, people seem to like it. What happened was that I hooked up with a with a, actually a, yeah, more or less an old friend that I haven't spoken to in I don't know how many years since we were in school I guess 
and I knew that he he was interested in filming, and he had quite he had good equipment, and I and I I know that he likes music and everything. So we I just uh, we met at a cafe and had a talk, and, and I said I have this idea. I got this band, and I think I, ha I have a I have a song. I had an idea in my head about. The first video was actually to cancel the clock, so that was the first time we were together. And anyway, we hooked up, hooked up, and uh, we also he also brought along another friend of him, uh, a, a, a woman called Kiki Holmen. She's also very interested in in, in, uh, yeah, in filming and so on. And and uh, we took it from there. And, and I ha I had an idea for cancel the clock. I also had an idea about genius because it's. The song is uh, actually, yeah, more or less a tribute to to the to Freddie Mercury, and because uh, that was a huge, uh, he had a huge impact on me when I was growing up. I would, I loved the first five, six albums of the band, and um, still do. I mean, uh, it's probably the albums that I've listened to the most, and I still can listen to them without thinking it's. Uh, I'm not fed up with them. Yeah, and I still love. It. I'm not that fond of what he did later in the '80s and so on. But that period of time, and it was so much part of my growing up and, and uh, everything. So it, it is a tribute to him. And I, I really, I, I had this idea of traveling in a car, uh, and I w wanted to have a this, this thing with a young boy traveling with me. It's just more or less like because I wanted to be. Uh, the concept of the album, yeah. the young boy and the old man, me, me driving the car is, I guess that's the old man then, and we have the young boy, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to do it, and they, they, by now you don't need like super cam camera teams or anything, so we did, didn't cost much at all, and I guess they put in a lot of time that I probably haven't paid that much for, but. <laughs> And I'm very, very grateful for that, Thomas and Kiki. You did it. You did an awesome job. Well, I would, I would have done it, uh, <coughs> even though we. The fact is, we actually had a meeting with the Flower Kings. Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, maybe early this year and we actually made some plans and then all of a sudden the Steve Hackett thing came up for Royne so those plans were no more and uh, and then I know he's uh, actually involved in uh, other projects too that will probably release some some things uh, yeah ne next year so at the moment I don't know when when uh, or if the Flower Kings would play again. I guess, I guess we will play again, but I haven't got a clue when we'll when we will start to record the next album. And, uh, and I actually talked to Roy now about he had he had some ideas and he even had a title for it and he was was very like uh, up for it. But and I think this for, I'm very very happy for Roy now because uh, I think he's having the time of his life playing with a, one of his old like. Heroes and, and, and to be able to show the people what an amazing bass player he actually is. I know that for years, but he actually had played on some of the early Flower Kings albums and so on. Still, I, I actually I went to see Steve Hackett in Stockholm, and, and it felt really weird to see Roy now on stage playing bass. It's Jesus, it looks crazy, but he was awesome. He really did a good job, I think. Future plans, uh, uh, as I told you, there's no future plans for Flower Kings at the moment. So uh, we got more, one more show. This is the last show on this tour, but we're going to do a festival in Stockholm in November together with uh, Von Herzen Brothers, amongst others, uh, Ritual, and lots of Swedish bands. In fact, Thomas uh, and the Jonas and Felix Lehrmann from the Flower Kings will uh, play there with their project Barracuda Triangle as well. So yeah, it's going to be an awesome lineup. And uh, after that, we we actually we've been talking about it on this tour, and 
And uh, I can't say what will definitely, but I, one one possible option is that we will try to make a what do you say live recording DVD or live album or whatever, maybe rent like a theater or something in our hometown and maybe be there for uh, for a day or so and invite people and uh, make a yeah live DVD recording. It might be the the next thing we'll do. Uh, part, uh, if that won't happen, I mean I'm writing, uh, so uh, sooner or later there will be a new album. But uh, I don't, uh, I have no plans when we're going to go into the studio. So.